when I began building Notion metrics, I started out in Bubble. You can see here is my actual app with the home page here. I quickly realized though, because of the functionality that I wanted, that I would need to extend Bubble's capabilities. Here's why. If you haven't used Notion before, it's essentially a very flexible to-do list and can in house a database and lots of other great stuff. I wanted to put a live updating dashboard inside my Notion pages. And to do so, I would need a pretty magical embed link to basically go out, pull all of these numbers, save them, and then update them. And because of some limitations in Notion and just how embedded links work, I would need to do that all with an image file. This is where if I tried to do this with Bubble, I just wouldn't be able to. There aren't many limitations when it comes to what you can do inside of a web app, but when you start involving other software with Bubble, that's where it can become tricky. In this case, I needed to create a smart embed link. So how could I do that? Well, this is where I turned to extending Bubble with Node. Essentially, what I wanted to do was take the good fast parts of Bubble, meaning the interface here, and the data element. And in this case, by going to my integrations page, you can see that this is where all of the magic happens, where I need to go out and pull metrics from all of these different sources. I could use the database inside of Bubble to save all of these things, but for the actual embed link, the link here that would need to be copied to be pasted into Notion to display all of these different data points, I would need to build something different. That would be essentially my own API. Now, an API is essentially going to a URL address that can pull or push information. And if you've never used an API before, it might be a stretch to think that you can build one. But with Node and an Express server, it is actually super easy. So let's go over to my code over here. This is a very simple Node.js app using what's called an Express server. And to boil most of it down, all we need to do is create a route, meaning in my browser, if I go to this app slash embed, it will run all of these different functions and then return something. In this case, it's going to return the updated metrics. So essentially what I needed to do in Bubble was I needed to connect this API with my Bubble app. So by going to the backend workflows tab, uh, you can see here that I have a lot of different workflows going. And essentially what I needed to do here is whenever a link was loaded up, I needed to do some stuff inside of Bubble. Now, this was really easy to get going in Bubble, and I did a lot of my data pulling and saving inside of Bubble for this reason. And this is a key point when it comes to extending Bubble with code. You don't need to do everything in code, only if it's the most efficient thing to do. In this case, it was still the most efficient thing to use Bubble and Bubble's API connector to do all of these custom calls to get and save data from all of the different sources. But when it came to actually extending this to work in Notion, that's where I needed Node.js to come in. So after hooking up Bubble to my API, meaning whenever this link was loaded, it was going to do this kind of stuff, that's where I turned to this function called screenshot.js. You can see here that screenshot has a bunch of different functions in it. So I'm gonna run through these one by one to show you how it works. And no worries if you aren't familiar with JavaScript, I will explain what's happening. You don't need to know the syntax. All right, so let's go over to my screenshot.js file here. And you can see that the first one is called fetch. Now, this is really important because this is showing how we're interacting with Bubble. The first thing I'm doing is to see if it's been more than a certain amount of time since the last screenshot or save was taken. So I'm going out to Bubble and I'm using an NPM package, meaning a third party package, to go out and grab from my Bubble database the ID of the user and basically returning the information from my Bubble database. So when that response comes back, I'm able to get some information about the user, the plan and the last time that they've updated. And then once I've pulled that date out, I can use another node library called moment to compare basically now today's date to the last update date. Now you can see already that I've relied on two JavaScript or node libraries 
This one's Axios and this one's Moment. This is probably the key functionality of being able to extend your app with Node is you are able to use NPM packages. And there are so many packages out there of really useful functions that allow you to do a lot more with very basic JavaScript skills. So in this case, rather than writing out the code to compare dates myself, all I do is just say, hey, I need to find out the difference between this date in number of hours, and it's gonna give me the number of hours since. Now, basically I'm going to say, okay, with free plans, I need to skip refresh and only run the capture every 12 or 24 hours. So I'm saying, okay, if the day diff is greater than 12, then run refresh. If not, do not. And if it's a paid plan, every page load should launch. So set that equal to true. That is setting a variable to my next function, which is going to be key because when I call next as a function here, it's going to go to my next function. And I kind of set that up like a series of events here in my route tree. So again, when this link is visited, it's going to do this function. And then when it sees next, it will do this function and then it will do this function and then this function. So it's really easy in JavaScript to have an order of events when using node. And that's what I really like about it when it comes to doing this really complex functionality. Okay. So now getting on to the check function, this is a pretty simple one. All I need to do is I need to figure out how many integrations are connected from the user side. And then if the refresh is set to true, I'm going to hit next. If not, I'm going to send something back to the user. This means they already have a captured metric. And then I'm just, all I want to do is I want to set this to render, meaning it will show up when this link loads. So rendering essentially means this is already there. And so it's just going to load inside of their notion page. So what if they don't actually have this and, or if refresh is set to true? Well, again, you see next, meaning it's going to go to the refresh area. And this is where it starts to get complex and where I spent the majority of my time writing this code because I needed to go out and figure out a way to get these metrics, save them, capture them, and then display them. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell bubble, Hey, pull all of this data for this user and refresh the stats. Now, this is another example of bubble working together with node. This is a post request. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to go to this URL. I'm going to send this URL, the ID of the user, and I need it to pull the newest metrics. So going back to bubble, that is going back to this endpoint here. When I send a post request to this endpoint, it's telling bubble, okay, great. Go out and save all of this data, update it and save it to the database. So I'm not only able to in node tell bubble what to do, but I'm also able to tell bubble to do actions to help me out with my functions, which is great because ultimately what I need to do is take all that updated data and then capture it. And that's going to be my next function. Now, finally, we get to the capture function. This capture function could be a very arduous task, but luckily what I have is a package called Puppeteer, which handles a lot of the complexity for me. This is one of my favorite things about using Node is you can use a Puppeteer package to do a lot of different things on the web. Basically what Puppeteer does is it creates a new Google Chrome instance for you and allows you to different, do different things on that website. People use it to scrape, People use it to scrape data from websites. People use it to automatically log in and grab things from websites. What I'm using it for here is to load a page and then capture it, take a screenshot essentially of what is happening inside a bubble. So what is happening here is I'm calling this capture website, which is going to take my bubble capture URL, send it the ID of the user and take a screenshot or take an image capture of those updated metrics to display in Notion. So all of this good stuff here is essentially just talking to the puppeteer package. And once that is done, I'm going to send a key back to bubble saying, okay, great. That has been saved. Now I'm ready for the final step, which is to take that saved screenshot and put it onto AWS. And here's another advantage of using node. I can save something custom to AWS, essentially a separate database, which I needed to do in this case, because 
if a normal image was saved here, it would cache, meaning every time you reloaded the page, it would pull just the saved image in the browser cache. What I needed to do was I needed to refresh this image every single time and make sure it didn't get saved. So by saving to AWS, having my own custom S3 bucket in this case, I could create my custom cache control and say, do not cache this image. So essentially what I do here is I send to AWS. Okay, great. Here was the image that was just captured. And I finally upload it to AWS. So all of this different stuff happens. You can see here 163 lines of code. And again, if you're pretty new to JavaScript, it could be probably a little overwhelming, but overall, all I need to do here is when this link is loaded, run function one, run function two, run function three and run function four. That combined with my bubble database and the integrations page, which essentially here, all it does is when something is connected, let's say one service, you click rescue time and connect it with your API code. It generates your link. When you go to Notion and paste it here, all of a sudden you're able to pull from node node runs all of those functions. And then at the end of the day, you end up with metrics that just refresh. So that's it. That's how notion metrics works in the background by taking bubble and extending its capabilities with Node.js. If there's something you're struggling to build in bubble that you'd like to see me extend using Node.js and express, let me know in the comments and I'll think about it for my next video. Thanks.